the forward LIBOR curve reflects the path that LIBOR rates are forecast to take. Now we need to know them in case you might want to lock in rates on future interest expense and loans or maybe you've got income and money coming in and you want to lock in a deposit rate. And sometimes you'll hear people call the forward curve the implied forward LIBOR curve. So let's just see what the word implied actually means. What are these rates suggested by? Now, if rates are forecast to rise, then we, we're talking about a positive yield curve. Some people would call this a normal yield curve, and it reflects a growing economy with an inflationary outlook. In other words, prices are forecast to rise, the business is doing pretty well, everybody's happy. Now, when rates are forecast to fall, we say this is an inverted or negative yield curve, so it's just the opposite. Inflation may be coming off, and you don't need to control uh, spending so much. Now, we can generate a forward LIBOR curve from markets like financial futures. Now, in America, the financial futures contract goes out to 10 years. It's the most traded and most liquid contract in the world. In other words, it's very, very easy to get a price, whether you're a buyer or a seller. And what you want to do is when you build a yield curve, you want to use the most liquid instruments, the most traded instruments for a specific maturity. Now, you can look at the forward LIBOR rates of the futures, or you can just use simple maths to calculate the forward curve. But what does it actually show? Well, let's say we're looking at our screens today and LIBOR has been set at about 1.3%. If you could click your fingers and move forward in time three months and now look at your screen, what would the three month rate be? Well, what this next cross is showing you is where the three month rate will be in three months time. Now, click your fingers again, move forward in time another three months, and now what this is showing you is where the market thinks three-month LIBOR will be in six months' time. So, if you think about it, you're generating a, a path of crosses showing you where the market thinks the three-month interest rate is going to move. So, you could see here that gradually LIBOR rates have been going up. And in fact, if you keep clicking your fingers uh, for another ten years, then you could see that in 10 years' time, LIBOR's forecast go from about 1.3% today to 2.8%. So twice the starting level of what we've got at the moment. So where do these numbers actually come from? Are you just guessing them or making them up or asking around? Well, they're actually specifically calculated numbers. They're purely a mathematical derivation. And this is a simplistic way of how to look at it. Imagine that you've got Peter and John and they've both been given £100 to invest. I've got a six month rate here of 5% and a 12 month rate of 5.5. Now John decides to invest his money, his £100 in the market for a year for 12 months at 5.5% and obviously that's going to have principal and interest at the end of the year of £105.50. Well Peter he's going to be able to earn 5% on his money so he sticks it in the bank for six months and with half a year's worth of interest, his £100 will have grown to give him £102.50 in six months' time. What Peter wants to make sure is that for the next six months, he can earn enough interest on his £102.50 so that he also ends up with £105.50 at the end of the year. If he doesn't end up with the same cash as Peter uh, and John, or John and Peter have the same cash at the end of the year, one of them's going to feel shortchanged. Now, if you know your starting cash and your final cash, you can easily work out the rate of return you should be earning. And in this case, I've worked it out to be 5.85%. So, you can see here that if we know our 6-month rate and our 12-month rate, we can imply our 6-month rate in 6 months' time. And so, if you do this all the way out to 10 years, there you have a forward LIBOR curve. Now, you might want to do it mathematically, and that's absolutely fine. So again, here I've shown the 5% for 6 months and 5.5% for 12 months, and there's a simple formula. Now, it looks pretty horrible at first, but if you look at the right-hand side, it's saying that if you have £1 invested at the 12-month rate, or 5.5%, here written down as 0 0.055, that return should be the same as investing £1, and look on the left-hand side here, at 0 0.025. What's the 0 0.025? Well, that's your 5% for half a year. And then 
you compound that up for the second half with another half year's worth of interest at what we call your 6's 12's rate. The rate starting 6 months from today, ending 12 months from today. So mathematically you can work it out in a pretty straightforward way. So that's how we come up with the forward LIBOR curve and if you want to hear how it connects or relates to the swap rate for that particular maturity, have a look at the other modules.